I've enjoyed the leadership of the Spirit by the mercy of God. I know that God can lead. I look at my life today and sometimes I wonder what He's done. The power of following the Holy Spirit. And sometimes it does not make any sense. One of the most, one of the most striking instructions the Holy Spirit gave me in my life was many years ago. Internet was just in its infancy and God gave me an instruction. He said, take your teachings, put it on the internet. And he said, my angel will take it to the nations. That is how I will announce you. It didn't make any sense at that time, but the foolishness of his leadership. And with that simple obedience, look what God has done today. For someone you came here so that God will remind you again that he's still alive and he's still directing men. Let me tell you the truth. Beware of over dependence on common sense. It is true that wisdom is profitable to direct, but make sure it is wisdom indeed. The ways of God in many, many, many regards will be foolishness. There are times that God will direct you like I would always give here. An example, lock your door and just dance and celebrate for one hour. Direction from the Spirit of God. Now, to the carnally minded, it doesn't make sense. How do you lock your door and just celebrate and dance before God? If someone comes to catch you there, they will call a psychiatrist and say, please come and help my brother. This financial thing is getting into his head. But there are people who dance their way to fearful miracles. There are people who rejoice their way to fearful miracles. There are times the Holy Spirit have, has given men very painful instructions. You just got some money and then he gave you an instruction to sow it. And you know it was him. You took that step by faith and boom, doors just opened for you. I've seen God do things that did not make sense. Instructions he gave me. Instructions of sacrifice. Instructions of prayer. Instructions of things to do. I think about the heaviest of them in recent time was, I think it was last year or thereabout, when God gave a very serious instruction. As a ministry to sow a particular seed. It was quite a serious seed, honestly. And then, God now gave me an instruction that what he told the ministry to sow, as a person, I should sow twice of it. No matter how blessed you are, you will feel it. It's like surgery. It's like appendix. You are removing something. You will feel it. I said, God, I know you too much. I can't lie that it is not your voice. But I honored God with that instruction and my goodness. Let, let's, to God be the glory. Behind the exploits of the saints, when you see people who look foolish, getting God's result is because there is a wise spirit directing them. When you see people who look frail, commanding extraordinary results, this is the reason why there is no bragging and boasting. It is a product of his wisdom. It is a product of his wisdom. Ladies and gentlemen, let him direct your business and see what becomes of your business. Let him direct your ministry. Let him direct your church. Allow him. Let him take his place and watch the wonder working power of his wisdom. It was by his wisdom that he brought the mandate of sounds of revival. It was by his wisdom that he's led us thus far as Ebenezer. Don't doubt the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. He's not only a wise spirit, he's an ancient spirit. He's lived with many people and produced glory out of them. I'm praying for you. Whatever has made you to ignore the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We are talking of men who are spiritual. You have been taking a lot of decisions in the flesh. They look wise until they cause you pain. They look wise until they make you look like a fool. From tonight I pray for you. Crying to my God to help you. That you will begin to enjoy the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Shout a believing amen. Enjoy the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. There are people today who had instructions from God and they obeyed foolishly and he transformed their lives. He turned them to signs and wonders. Let me give you the last feature. So number one, your affection, your heart condition, features of a true spiritual man. Number two, the degree to which you are spiritually minded, word-based transformation. Number three, submitting to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Number four, your passion to obey the speakings of God. Your passion to obey the word of God. It is one thing to hear God. 
it is another thing to obey spiritual people are obedient people you don't pile spiritual instructions from scripture and the voice of the spirit and just dump them there promptness in obedience deuteronomy chapter 21 chapter 28 from verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I commanded this day that the Lord will set thee on high above the nations of the earth and that all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. The Bible says, if ye be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. If ye be willing and obedient. Someone say obedience. Shout it like you are receiving the grace. You must obtain grace to be obedient. Let me tell you this. There are different levels of obedience. I've taught you this. The highest level of obedience demonstrated in scripture is obedience unto death. There is such a thing as obedience unto death. It was Jesus that demonstrated that. Obedience unto death. Let this mind be within you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Leave the scripture. And the Bible tells us, verse 6, that even though he was God, he did not consider it robbery to be equal with God seven, but that he made himself of no reputation, took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Verse eight, and the Bible says, being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross as a result wherefore on account of that god had so highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every other name can i tell you this spirituality is measured by your willingness to obey god no matter how convenient or otherwise are we together if it be thou bid me come he said come Father, if it be your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. If this is what you want done, then in the name of Jesus Christ, I submit myself to it. Obedience. Obedience is not all convenient. Let me tell you. There are many dimensions of obedience that does not come with convenience. Obedience to give. Obedience to sacrifice. Obedience to submit yourself to prayer. Obedience to study the word. But contained within obedience is the empowerment that makes people spiritual indeed. Someone say obedience. Can I give you one more? Love. Let me give you love so that we'll stop there. The highest index for measuring true spirituality is the degree to which the love of God as revealed in Christ is furnished within you and is manifested from you. Love. The degree to which the love of Christ as a capture of the nature of Christ love in all this you're getting if the love of Jesus not love for God I'm not talking about love for God we settled that already number one you can love God but if the love nature of the Christ is not fully formed in you and is not flowing through you to others you are not spiritual I can tell you this is where many spiritual men are wanting many spiritual men are not wanting in giving many spiritual men are not even wanting in surrender they love god many spiritual men are not wanting in terms of the word and all of that it is in this area of allowing the love of christ to flow through them it says the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the koinonia the sharing together the participation of the holy spirit it says to be with you all amen hallelujah i have taught you in this house that the the singular description of god's nature is love the bible says it without missing words that god is love and if you are born of god then it means you are also born out of a life of love it then means anything that carries hate is not of god are we together the only thing we're supposed to hate is evil the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 7, it says, be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. But then, when it has to do with your fellow human, no. There are many Christians who still walk in hatred and bitterness. You cannot become a spiritual man that way. Now, let me tell you this. Until you have a revelation of what Jesus did, it will be impossible for you to love men the way they are because men are wicked are we together now there are men who are almost unlovable but not when you know what jesus did for you 
The secret to love is not just confessing it. The secret to love is a revelation of what Jesus went through as a demonstration of the Father's love for you. When you understand that, it empowers you to love even the unlovable. To know that even faith works by love and that anything that is not of faith is sin and that faith works by love. Here's what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It says, though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and I have not love. KJV says charity. It says, I am nothing. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. Though I offer my body to be burnt, he says, are we together now? And I do all of these things and I have not love. I am nothing. Believers, hear me. If you are battling with hatred, if you are battling with bitterness, these are spirits you have to trust God to die out of your life tonight. There are many preachers who cannot see the more of God. Greater power and greater glory. Not because prayer is missing. Not because fasting is missing. Not because Bible study is missing. Not because giving is missing. Not because intelligence is missing. What is missing is love. This is true for businessmen. This is true for preachers. This is true for people, you know, within family circles. This is true for people within an environment. Love. It's at this point I thank my parents so much for naming me the name that they gave me. My name means way to love. The way to love. Very good name. The way to love. I walk in love as a choice. I walk in love. You know what lack of love does? Sorry to use this description. How many of you have seen a gutter that allows a passage for water being blocked by some debris and all kinds of things? You see that it short circuits the potential there are times that it can literally block the water and it stays there and it begins to stench and smell. Are we together? That when you are passing, it can be so unpleasant. That is how bitterness and hatred, that's what it does to the flow of the anointing. You can be a spiritual man and block the flow of power and greater glory with bitterness, with envy, with hatred, with all of these kinds of things. And you find out that in spite of the fact that you are dissipating spiritual energy, you are not able to communicate and transmute the life of God to people as she should be. It is love. God taught me this early in life and ministry. And I learned this. Let me tell you, Koinonia. God knows that I'm not just teaching you. God knows that I love you with all my heart. It's not only Jesus I love you. I love you too. Ask him. <laughs> Hallelujah. It is the reason why I keep pounding truth upon truth until you become. Tired or otherwise until you become. Insisting that you hear the word of God is love. Are we together now? Yeah. Some of you here, you don't love at all. If the only person you love is your wife, you don't have the love of God at work in you. If the only person you love is your husband, the only person you love is your children. If the only person you love is your destiny helper, you are not a spiritual man. This love must be shared abroad. Are we together now? Can you love people who don't have anything to add to you? There are people who their love is only controlled by value. It is hypocrisy. When it has to do with love, it must not be controlled by value. Reward is controlled by value. But love, genuine Bible love is agape. It's called unconditional. I don't like to call it unconditional. I call it undeserving. Because when you say unconditional, it's not exactly very accurate. It is undeserving. Agape, 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 agape. That you come to church and you are happy, you are full of love. Not that you come and say, ah, no, I'm sitting near this neighbor now. You are the guy that matched me last week, eh? I still remember. Let me tell you in advance. If you touch me, I will, even though service is on, I will still caution. No, no. Love. Lay your hand on your chest. Say, I walk in love. Do you know? I learned about love the more studying the materials of Papa Copeland. Very simple, very frail. I used to hear him teach, you know those days we were looking for power. We needed something that communicates power directly. So when you hear all these kinds of feminine word, walk in love, ah, no now, tell me I need something that I need energy and proof. I'm going for a meeting. My rising in ministry depends on that meeting. Don't talk to me about love. Talk to me about power, signs and wonders. Now you are speaking my language. How foolish. Now, many years forward, we see the wisdom in these fathers that truly, faith works by love. If you do not walk in love, 
love for God and love for people there are things that will be there but your eyes will not see it are we together yeah. hatred is like a blinder you can stand before an open door and be covered by hatred be covered by jealousy be covered by anger and not see anything I choose to walk in love I'm too young for high blood pressure I choose to walk in love in the name of Jesus I'm speaking to someone here you have a book full of black uh, list you've been writing it since primary school secondary school university now in your place of work you are a director as childish as I'm saying this you have it whether on paper or in your mind tear that list now in the name of Jesus lay it down and have peace for God's sake possible you don't know so so and so person hurt me 1999 have peace my brother you are the one who will be wounded love everybody say it. say love. love the bible says god is love and if i am born of god joshua selman you must walk in love it is a choice it's not about feelings it is a command in fact by this shall all men know is that still in your bible that ye are my disciples when you have love one towards another Ladies and gentlemen, I just handed it tonight by this teaching. The keys. These are things that I have lived by, by the message of God for many years. And it continues to schedule seasons of power and ever increasing glory. My desire is that this version of myself would die permanently and a newer one evolves with greater glory, greater wisdom and greater power. And so this sermon is even to me myself. The path is uncompromising. It doesn't matter who you are. It's the same path you will follow. Setting your affection over the things of God. That your heart is completely sold out to his purposes. And then to remain spiritually minded by engaging the word of God for your transformation. Are we together now? Yes. Obtaining grace from God. Grace from God to be obedient to everything that he tells you to do. To be led of the spirit to be obedient and then to walk in love i will stop here so that we'll pray rise up on your feet the spiritual man the spiritual man the spiritual man hallelujah now listen to me in this place tonight some of you are men of god already some of you there is a walking of the spirit and he's producing great vessels in ministry. Some of you are businessmen. Some of you are politicians. You are career people. Some of you are family people. It doesn't matter what area of endeavor. Let me tell you this. If you want to see the more of God. You want to see greater glory. Greater power. You want to host heavier weights of his glory upon your life. Then I want you to go back and trust God to walk upon your affection. Remember, I started by telling you there are three kinds of people. Some of you here are natural people. Some of you are carnal and have remained carnal for a very long time. Sensual, victims of the senses and the flesh. There are few people who are contending for true spirituality. My call by this teaching tonight is to draw you closer that there is still a deeper walk with God. And for those of you who have tasted of the good hand of God upon your life, let me tell you, do not plateau. It's too early. There are deeper dimensions you can dive to and the key is spirituality. The Bible says for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. One prayer point, Father, I desire to be a spiritual man, a spiritual woman indeed. Go ahead and pray. I obtain grace to walk in keeping with the things that I have heard. Someone pray, let it be from the depth of your heart. I obtain grace, I obtain grace, I obtain grace in the name of Jesus. Greater levels of the anointing upon my life, upon my ministry, greater influence, greater capacity to be trusted with the more of God, to be trusted with greater light, to be trusted with greater fire, greater power, to be a more effective witness, a greater ambassador at the cutting edge of God's prophetic program. I obtain grace to be spiritual. Go ahead and pray. Grace to be spiritual. Grace to be totally devoted with my heart, lost in the things of God. Grace to be spiritually minded by submitting myself to the word for transformation. Go ahead and pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. 
grace to be led of the spirit submitting to his wisdom trusting his judgments submitting to his leadership the grace for obedience delight some obedience someone is receiving it tonight finally pray that the love of jesus that god will rid you of the luggages of hate he will rid you of the luggages of bitterness the luggages of anger that god will help you go ahead and pray say father let your love be furnished in me let your love flow out of me like a river in the name of jesus christ let it flow out of me like a river flow out of me like a river flow out of me like a river in jesus mighty name we pray in jesus mighty name we pray in jesus mighty name we pray before i make the altar call i want to charge you listen to me make sure the ministry of the word and the ministry of prayer never dies in your life create a system by grace and by discipline god supplies the grace but you supply the willingness if you are not consistent in the prayer ministry as a believer you will not ascend to that stature of true spirituality and if you are not given to the word of god you are not given to study you are not given to learning. You are not given to learning newer ways, greater ways of God. Then you will be stunted in your growth. These two things I have learned in my own life, they have become secrets that will never fail. I have anchored them as pillars. You must pray every day, consistently. Every day, consistently. By discipline. It is not always convenient. Every day, consistently. You must interact with the word of God. Spend time in fellowship. This one is relative to the time you have available. But there are times you are alone. You just play worship and you are with the spirit. Just receiving an infusion of greater wisdom and life and power. Drinking from that well again. This is how spiritual men live. This is the way of power. This is the way of grace. Let me make the altar call. And then we'll wrap up for tonight. You need Jesus. He's the foundation for this journey to true spirituality. No man cometh to the Father except by me, Jesus said. And whilst hearing me speech and teach, the Spirit of God began to convict you, telling you that you need to make it right with Jesus tonight. It is for your sake that God has kept us, even up to this time. Do not waste this opportunity to make it right with Jesus. I'm asking someone here who is saying, Apostle, if you will give me a chance, I truly want to surrender my heart and my all to Jesus. Or perhaps someone is saying, I am rededicating my life. My own is that I don't know what is really happening with me and Jesus, but I know things are not well. I want to make it right. I'll count one to five very quickly. Wherever you are, please make your way to the front. God bless you as you come. Let's celebrate our brothers and sisters on their way coming. God bless you, my sister. God bless you, sir. God bless you. I see people coming from the balcony. Make your way to the front. Scattered across online all the overflows zaria make your way to the front today is the day of salvation when you hear his voice harden not your heart he calls you to make you he calls you to bless you he calls you to give you a new beginning come apostle i want to come but mine i don't i'm not sure if i'm really in right standing with jesus you can join them come you can have tonight the assurance of salvation once and for all a few more seconds for someone who is still coming someone who is still contemplating if the holy spirit is speaking to your heart it couldn't have been satan satan will not ask you to come and stand here so make your way god bless you god bless you god bless you hallelujah if you're joining them please make that very fast i'm about to lead them to pray right now thank you so much my brothers and sisters for opening up your heart to receive i still see people coming let's celebrate them they are coming god bless you god bless you there is always room at the cross god bless you come come young and old male and female come to jesus the bible says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away is there still one person making his way to the front come 
God bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let me request that you lift your right hand, all of you who have come. Thank you very much for making this bold decision. The Bible says as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Say it after me as loud as you can. Say, Lord Jesus. Those who are joining them, would you double up so you come? You need to say the prayer. It's important that you say the prayer. Say again, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I truly believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight, I'm a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your beautiful hands. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you so much for these precious ones who have come declaring your lordship over their lives. The Bible says, as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I pray that the grace that sustains, may that grace be released upon you. I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God. And that from tonight, you'll go from glory to glory and grace to grace, walking victoriously and loving Jesus all the days of your life. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Please do me one last favor. Look to my um, right. That will be your left. There are counselors waiting to have a word with you and to pray with you very quickly. And then you'll be back to your seat. Let's honor them as they go. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. All right. So um, we're going to be closing the service now, but I want to encourage you. The reason why I ask you to go back listening to these teachings is because I can guarantee you that most people do not hear everything God says whilst they sit down listening, no matter how attentive you are. Go back and listen to this teaching again, the spiritual man. Submit yourself with your pen and paper cross the I's, dot the T's like a student and then pray the prayers and use that teaching to build your life and return with testimonies in the name of Jesus. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. The benefits of being spiritual will begin to speak in your life. The wisdom, the power, the grace, the trust may it begin to follow you from today in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your weak beginning. Experience testimonies. Testimonies of breakthrough, testimonies of lifting, testimonies of restoration, testimonies of abundance, testimonies of prosperity, testimonies of favor in the name of Jesus Christ. You are exempted from any and all evils. You and your loved ones, I declare that your love for Jesus is waxing hotter and hotter. The wisdom of the word is at work in your life. You will enjoy the leadership of the spirit this week. No weapon fashioned against you prospers and every tongue that rises up against you falls in judgment. I place a mark of favor upon you, a mark of victory upon you, a mark of honor upon you, a mark of lifting upon you. Enjoy speed, no more delay, no retrogression. That which is missing may it be found this week. That which you've been praying over may it be answered this week. The human agents who show up in your life may they show up this week. May this be a week of laughter for you. Good news from Sunday to Sunday. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Together let's share the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. The sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Please greet someone by your left and right and then see you on Sunday. God bless you.